Hello my people. I hope everybody is fine. Uh, I've been away for some reasons which were unavoidable. Many have been asking me what is happening to me but uh, there were some issues which I had to, to sort out. And guys, uh, thanks for the 1000 plus subscribers. And uh, thanks for the support you are showing me in this channel. And uh, I pray God that uh, you people may continue being blessed with my content. So those who have not subscribed, continue subscribing, sharing and liking my videos and making my channel reach as many people as possible. Lastly, we were talking about uh, what we call pelvic inflammatory disease. We talked about uh, its description, what it means. We talked about the causes and the risk factors. Today, I want to go back to this uh, chapter and talk about uh, the diagnosis or how a healthcare provider can uh, diagnose or know that a person or a patient, especially ladies, is having a pelvic inflammatory disease because it's usually for ladies, not for men. When you go to an health care provider, obviously there is no specific diagnosis for this disease, but uh, health care providers or doctors rely on the following. <coughs> One, the patient may, might have a positive history of having this disease previously. So that means if you had pelvic inflammatory disease previously or, or in your past years of your life, it can always recur or it can always come back. So this will direct the doctor in diagnosing pelvic inflammatory disease. Number two, through signs and symptoms. We have obvious signs and symptoms that uh, a patient will present with, like we discussed in our pre previous video, that the patient may uh, be uh, having those pains and all that. Those who went through my previous video uh, can tell uh, about the signs and symptoms. Number three, we have what we call a pelvic examination. <coughs> in a pelvic examination, the doctor will pul palpate your a pelvic region and there'll be tenderness or swelling in the pelvic region. No, I mean in the pelvic region. Next we have a vaginal swabs. What is a vaginal swab? The discharge from a, a female reproductive re, uh, system or from a, a, the vagina. That is what we call a vaginal swab. So it's always taken to the lab for laboratory examination to detect gonorrhea or chlamydia, which are major causes of uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. Next, we have uh, what we call blood and urine tests. If you take blood and urine from a patient who is having a pelvic inflammatory disease, Maybe it will be test HIV positive or other sexually transmitted diseases. If you have had a sexually transmitted disease as we talked in our previous video, this is a risk factor or this may predispose one into getting a pelvic inflammatory disease. And also, an HIV positive patient will be at risk of having a pelvic inflammatory disease because the immune system is always on the lower side. <coughs> Next, we have uh, what we call ultrasound. Ultrasound, uh, ultrasound waves uh, create an image or uh, image of your reproductive system which might show whether you are having this pelvic inflammatory disease or not. No, next we, we have what we call lapar laparoscopy, which is viewing of the pelvic organ. Next we have uh, endometrial biopsy. Biopsy is whereby a piece from your endometrium is always cut and taken to the laboratory. And the uh, tests are carried down to determine whether you have pelvic inflammatory disease 
all other kind of an std which might predispose you to a pelvic inflammatory disease next let's talk about the treatment or oh, if you are diagnosed of pelvic inflammatory disease what is the possible treatment you are going to get according to the diagnosis in most cases treatment for pelvic inflammatory disease is always antibiotics since its uh, its main cause it's a bacteria so the dosage under which you are going to be given will always de depend on the level of your infection according to your doctor or your health care provider the bacteria will all the the, the antibiotics sorry the antibiotics will always kill the bacteria and th this will make the patient ill from pelvic inflammatory disease uh, another thing you can do is uh, to treat your partner. If you are diagnosed of a pelvic inflammatory disease and maybe it's caused by a urinary tract infection or a sexually transmitted disease, it's always good to do what we call conduct tracing or partner tracing. This means you go and get your partner or your husband uh, he goes to the doctor and go, goes through the tests to diagnose if you have such urinary tract infection and then being treated will prevent or will pre prevent what we call reinfection to your partner. <coughs> Another point you can use in uh, management or treatment of uh, pelvic inflammatory disease is what we call having a uh, temporary abstinence. You can always abstain from sexual intercourse because most of these diseases are, uh, get to a person through sexual intercourse. How? When you, 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 you have a sexual intercourse with a person who have, has a sexually transmitted disease, this sexually transmitted disease can predispose you to getting a pelvic inflammatory disease so if you abstain from sexual intercourse it's a way of treatment or avoiding such kind of disease uh, in our next video we are going to co talk about the complications or what the patient is uh, expected or can suffer by having an un untreated pelvic inflammatory disease or when this disease it's not managed in the right way what does a patient expect let's meet in the next event video and guys let's continue subscribing sharing and liking our videos let's take this channel far and once again thank you guys for 1000 plus subscribers road to 2000 subscribers good have a good evening thank you